All right, um, I um been doing a little bit of testing on this thing, and I'm pretty sure I have a maxed out current sensor. Now, these current sensors are rated to 950 amps, um, and the output resolution, well, let, or uh, sorry, the the sensitivity, like the millivolts per amp is 2.3 millivolts per amp with 8 volts in. Now what I do with this setup is I actually run, because my brain board when I run a, one of these controllers needs to have 0 to 5 volts for and for the current sensors and it actually wants to see around 2.5 volts for 0 amps and then it'll be you know, plus above that for positive amperage and below that for negative amperage. What that means is when the phase is you know, conducting from the positive out to a phase on the motor, it actually um, reads positive, and when it's conducting from the negative, from the low side MOSFETs out, it's going to read negative amperage. Nonetheless, um, <clears throat> with this current sensor I have in there, it's a um, CSLA2EN down there at the bottom, and this current sensor is a one I ordered probably a year later than the other three I've been running on my leaf inverter. Um, I've seen those other ones run spikes of, you know, 1500 amps, well, no, probably more like 1300 amps. And um, for some reason, this one seems to be maxing out right around 1000 amps. And it's rated for 950, so by all means, it's not supposed to, you know, I don't expect them to read above 950, but I just thought, because of the um, resolution, if you work the math, 2.3 millivolts per amp, actually works out to um, being able to read just above 1700 amps. Now, that would be if it's completely at zero volts and completely at five volts or, well, with my voltage divider setup that I use, but, you know, you'd be completely zero to eight volts if it was gonna be, be all the way to that number. But nonetheless, I usually expect them to read, you know, at, at least above a thousand amps, they seem to, but this one doesn't seem to go further. And I think that's actually, showing me that, well, first off, I need a different current sensor to continue measuring this, but second off, something even more exciting, I've already pulsed well over a thousand amps through this um, Game Changer controller doing double pulse tests. So I have it set up right now with three inductors, my scope, and um, I added one extra cap to actually prove this test. That's actually a 1500 uh, microfarad cap. That's just there for testing. And I uh, got some pretty good data today. So let's just do a double pulse test. So you can see where the, I, I originally thought that was the cap maxing out, but with that added 1500 microfarads of cap, it doesn't go any higher. And um, <clears throat> that flat curve there, we can almost estimate the current is gonna rise like that and probably peak somewhere around there. So if we were to bring this up, if I had to guess, like watching this curve, probably be looking somewhere around there. So I would guess it'd be about that high. That's 3.12 um, volts <clears throat> um, between the two. So that's a huge amount of current. So then we take this and we go 3.12. Uh, uh, divided by, now my math works out, I'm running 12 volts into the sensor and then I'm running a two to one voltage divider. Um, so that works out to 1.748 millivolts per amp. So then we divide that by 1.748. Sorry about the camera, I'm kind of not looking at it right now. Oh shit. Three, we can actually do the math this way. It's 3,120 millivolts divided by seven, shoot, it's 1.748. 748 equals, so that's theoretically probably 1784 amps right there, pulse through those. So <laughs> now that's, that's extremely hard to extrapolate because we're just kind of guessing from this flatness at the top of the curve, but what the hell, let's crank it up some more and just kind of extend it out further. Now it's cranked all the way. Um, this may blow up and it may not. 
So if we're to watch this curve, you can see it's not straight. So it's not pointing straight. It's curving. And if I had to guess, you can kind of look at this curve too. It might actually be a tiny bit below that. It might be right about there. That's fully cranked. But it's safe to say we're definitely, like this number here, right here, if you were to look at that, somewhere in the middle there, we're right around the 1.76, which with that 1.748 um, millivolts per amp, that's just a shy above, shy bit above um, 1,000 amps. Well, <clears throat> I'm pretty sure here that the current is building to about here. So we're probably getting somewhere around that number. So 2.92, you know, maybe a little below 3. But we're definitely, I would say it's pretty safe to say we're above 1.5 kiloamps, which is pretty cool. And that's more or less what I wanted to prove this thing to. Um, now I just need to verify the DSAT is all set up correctly and uh, clean up my mess and then start building up the other two phases. What I'll try and do in the meantime is I'll try and find a cost effective current sensor. I have it tucked in there. That was my original plan because I wasn't planning to put this big cap on top. I didn't even know where the hell to find those caps. This, I wouldn't say this is an afterthought. <clears throat> this is the best cap I can go with. Um, but nonetheless, it's um, what was I going to say? Nonetheless, this is the, the cap we want to use for now on because it's really, really good. At, uh, it's a poly cap. It's low, uh, low inductance, low resistance, which is super good. And I'm going to redesign it and pull the current sensor out of there. I'm going to actually have a different design that gets the driver stage mounted differently so it actually takes up less space. And I'll put the current sensor off to the side and I'll run a bus bar from in between these two. This is positive and negative. So um, most people get zapped when they touch that. I don't because I'm pretty much Superman, but nonetheless, it should be good. So I think what I'm going to try and do in the meantime is I'm going to try and get some new current sensors and then I'll, uh, at least one current sensor to prove what actual amperage I'm running through this. I'll use that to set up the desaturation detection and in the meantime I'll try and get the other two sets of um, phases built up so I can rebuild this thing as a full ready to go three phase controller. One other quick little test I'm going to do is I'm going to shut my my circuit breaker off here <clears throat> and I still got 140 14 volts on the setup there and I'm going to show you now what I actually have is all this energy I have a little pre-charge resistor across my um, um, <clears throat> circuit breaker what I'm actually going to show you with the double pulse test is that and that number there what we've just made is all pure power from the cap, which is 1.52. So this little 1500 microfarad and this 800 microfarad cap, uh, poly cap, <clears throat> the other one's an electrolytic, that is what's giving me that power, which is 1520 divided by 1.748. That's 869 amps just from the cap. That little cap over there, it helps a little bit. Believe it or not, this was doing about 650 on its own earlier. That little cap has actually jumped it up a couple hundred amps, which is super incredible because it's just a tiny little, you know, 12 gauge wire hooked up underneath. But nonetheless, I just wanted to add it to prove the cap wasn't the limiting factor. And basically I have done that. I could actually clip this wire right here that connects that other cap and I could actually dis disassemble it. I won't do it because I don't want to hurt myself, cause some sort of fire or whatever. But uh, then it would jump that, that peak current down that you can see there where the cap runs out of electricity and then it starts to fall. So nonetheless, <clears throat> that's actually really cool. That proves I've been putting more power through these than I thought and now it's time to continue.